Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedasp.net. In this video I'm going to continue my current video series about porting the old legacy.NET Framework MVC apps to the newer versions of ASP.NET Core 3.1. So far we have migrated the database and almost everything correlated to it, so let's now start migrating everything else. Uh, first things first, I would like to migrate the controllers. So let's start with the home controller. This thing, I'm going to port them one by one because we are not sure whether everything will start working out of the box. So if I just create the home controller and copy paste everything here. I would see that some some of these are essentially missing. So let's copy the base controller too. I'm going to create the base controller. And So I have a lot of things to consider here. First the controller is from the ASP.NET. I'm not going to I need to consider whether I'm going to continue working with structure map. So I'm going to remove the structure map. Our repository from settings, a cache service. I'm going to use the iMemory cache, which comes from the ASP.NET Core. View back settings. This get settings. First, I don't need structure map containers. Our repository from setting can be retrieved by calling this dot. I need to retrieve the our repository of setting service, so I'm going to make HTTP context request services get service, and I'm going to say that I need the settings like this good the container is not needed standard JSON result and let me see these these are apparently this is not used standard JSON result Not sure whether I'm going to use that. Let me see. Let's see who is using the comments controller. Okay. So apparently that just receives a string of error messages and it's used only on one place in comments controller. So I'm going to remove that piece of code. It's making too much noise for a simple error message which I can create without using anything else. Okay, let's see how these settings are used in the app. Apparently the layout project uses, the layout view uses the settings to render some stuff. I guess that's the reason 
it's in the base controller settings yep it gets the settings from here so we're going to need the settings i'm going to say protected right there is no begin execute and the new asp.net core there is on action executing so we can use that so let's go to the base controller and say protected override it's not protected i guess public override on action executing this one and I'm going to put that here settings manager what's this let's see base controller settings manager is some class in system web infrastructure so let's create that right new folder infrastructure and i'm going to create the class i'm going to copy it something like this good so now our base controller is ready let's start fixing our home controller so we need auto mapper good let's install auto mapper Before we use it, we would need to use view models. Let's see how view models are structured. Right, new folder, view models. Then I'm going to need blog post view model. In the home folder let's do something else let's copy the whole view models folder because that's mainly it has oops that was a mistake The view models folder contains mainly POCO classes, plain old COR objects, so it will be easy for us to just copy everything here. And I guess nothing will have a compile time error, well, except the IMAP from methods and extensions okay I'm up from we will need to add the I'm up from interface which is part of the infrastructure let's go and copy the home mapping folder from the infrastructure like this and it should start working good 
I block URL generator. We need to port out Mopper 2. So let's fix this. Good. There's a better way to make the IMAP from interface by using default interface methods. Without having to declare two interfaces, we may put this here and specify specify um, uh, specify a default implementation but I'm going to leave it like it was in the In the original implementation. Okay, auto mopper config. We need to make that um, auto mapper config in the new version. We need to use a profiler. Profiler or just profiler, not sure. So let's check that to mapper profiler. Okay, good. We need to inherit from the profile. And then we need to say something like alt mapper config. This thing loads this. Because in the previous versions of alt mapper we needed to actually uh, make the profilers work by their own. But in the newest version we need to just inherit the profile profile class and everything should work from their own and that should not be static and that should not be static too so i can say this create map map create mappings this like this Then so we ported auto mapper two. I guess <laughs> we're not sure whether this will work, but we'll see it in a minute. Wait a minute. I've did that in the wrong solution. So we need to revert this code here. Okay. And I guess this code too. Oh, I've broken the old school app. Apparently it's working again. Okay, let's see what else is missing here. Let's come back to the new solution and try to build it. So instead of output cache, I can use response cache. Response cache. 
this menu is a child action which is not available in the new sp.net core framework see so we need to convert that to uh, to a view to a view component so i'm going to leave it like this for now but i'm going to convert it to a view component later uh, i would need to inject mapper 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 like this Good. Pages data is part of the, I guess, from this action here. So let's port this child action to a view component. I'm going to create a folder components. Then I'm going to create menu view component which will inherit from view component like this and I'm going to say what was the convention component sp.net core it should be in, first the view should be part of the views shared components view component name okay so i would need to s create that components menu view component like this and view name okay And I'll need this method. In order to return the menu. I would need to introduce the pages data repository in the view component in order to extract the data. View components are just a simple simple way to extract logic from our views. Private read only. I would need the mapper too. Good and let's remove the async version from this. It should work. Let me check to invoke.
should work. I'm not sure if it's not working. I'm going to return to the original async version. So this dot mapper dot project two new item project the query and then call to list. Like this return view. We need to add the menu view here. I'm going to add a new view which would be called menu. Let's see that child action in order to just copy paste the view code. Done. This should work. Good. So our home controller is actually ported. Since most of the time why do we need to call is deleted? If we are using a deletable entity repository, there is no need to do that. We can just inject a deletable entity repository from page. And it should be easier because apparently this one will call is deleted for us. Okay. Personally, I don't like the I deletable entity repository interface and I don't delete this. I don't like this concept with repositories and deletable entity repositories. So we may refactor that to be a little bit better in terms of uh, project structure and architecture. If you would like to see that, let me know down below in the comments. But for now, I'm going to leave it. What we can do is we can add a global query to entity framework core so that everything which is actually deleted should not be queried. But for now, let's leave it. Let's make the app working correctly first, because that's a challenge too. And then we may decide to extract or delete the repositories or implement a better pattern. We may also decide to remove the I deletable entity. Uh, and not removing it, but more often, but not removing it entirely, but uh, using it better, using it with uh, better practices. Okay, so our home controller is done. Apparently, still a lot of things missing. I block URL generator. 
what is this I walk URL generator is walk URL helpers okay so apparently in the helpers folder there's a bootstrap helper good and bjork URL helper I'm just going to add a helpers folder here and I'm just going to copy the two files. Good, let's fix the namespace because I changed the folder structure and let's fix this namespace too. Good, let's see how that is working for us. Apparently the walk URL helper is just something to replace ugly strings to something more readable. Good enough. Let's see our next errors. This is an error, but I can say add view models. This is a good start. We can also add view models home because I don't want to write the namespace in every view this should be made to profile the tag is Actually, we should delete that because we no longer need it. And the tags too. Error view model. There's some error view model here. which I'm going to delete and I'm not going to just leave this message error an error occurred while processing your request I can do something like this uh, I can Oh, oh, wait a minute. This view model should not be used here because we have an exception handler home error. If something happens with the exception handler, let's remove that. Actually, we may. Uh, Okay, let's add actually the controller home public i action result error and let's return the view. 
this should be our error message when we don't use the production environment when we use the production environment and if the environment is in development it will show the developer exception page good okay let's see what else is missing and everything worked fine actually uh, actually not everything worked fine everything compiled fine but not sure about whether it will be uh, when we copy paste the layout pages the CSS the JavaScripts not sure whether everything will work correctly before we continue I would like to uh, thank all my Patreon supporters if you are not familiar with my membership program you can join Patreon at patreon.com slash the link is available down below in the description in which I provide different mentorship perks for example you can vote for the next video lesson I post exclusive video lessons on Patreon on the Patreon feed I have a private community in which you can ask any kind of questions in which are related to software development coding C sharp and so on and also I would like to thank all my page patrons who already joined thank you guys you truly rock and I appreciate your support expect many different videos and a lot more content produced in the future I appreciate it thank you so let's see uh, what else is missing let's go and port the layout page first what I need to do is I need to copy the whole layout page and see what will happen I guess nothing good so first things first we need to remove the styles render content CSS that's not uh, that will not work the partial is we need to call the partial the, the HTML partial here by using the the partial tag helper good the HTML action should be an action link yeah area administration currently is not working so we're going to add that later on if user is admin this is also something we need to add principal extensions which is in the helpers so let's add that I'm going to add infrastructure helpers add new class principal extensions and I'm going to copy that global constants administrator role name okay let's copy that too there's a project which has global constants a single class so I'm just going to add a class web constants mm. 
parent, I'm going to use it here. Let's leave it row name. Done. Good. Anything else? Personally, I would prefer to move every single method to an arrow function, but it will take too much time to do it on video, so if you prefer it this way, leave it with the arrow function, or if you want it the old school way of the C-sharp writing, do it like this. I'm going to leave it like this just because I don't want to waste too much time on video. Okay, uh, principal extension. So what I need to do is I need to add another using. I need to add the global block system dot web dot infrastructure dot helpers using so that the layout can find the is admin. This should be action link too. So menu home what is this okay Oh, that should not be an, an action link. This should be the view component. So I'm going to refactor it to say component dot invoke. It should be invoked only asynchronously. So let's go and fix it. I didn't want to make it that complicated, but if there is no other way. What's the reason to add the following root value here? Add new area administration. Oh, okay, yeah, got it. This means that we want to add the admin menu. Let's see that. Yeah, that should write the admin menu. Well, what should I do? I should create an um, admin menu items view component, I guess. This should render the view component without having me calling the component dot invoke a sync method. Uh, what else? So I'm going to remove that. This user is admin should be fixed too, but I'm going to leave it for now. I don't need it. Good, then we have a sidebar, okay, a sidebar and the scripts, 
going to leave the sidebar for now too that requires that requires uh, an additional view component and what we need to do is to render the scripts scripts and uh, content CSS so to do that we have already installed bootstrap which comes from the ASP.NET Core project but we need to add the additional CSS which is let's see how the original bundle what's included in it it includes font awesome bootstrap Want awesome CSS. We don't have that, so we need to install it. Additionally, what we need to do is we need to have the theme files copied. Good and the site CSS good let's do that so we need to add environment names equal development on development we would like to have link rel style sheet ASP append version true. We want to have a version appended to each of our each of our uh, CSS projects and CSS files because uh, otherwise the browser will cache our CSS and it will be difficult to debug. And also, if we deploy a new file to production, we want to have a new version of it so that the browser will invalidate the cache of all the clients who already used our application otherwise it will be difficult to invalidate that cache so what we need to do is we need to add lib bootstrap dist css bootstrap css and we need to do that for all our libraries, but there's a problem here. The first problem is that we have uh, installed Bootstrap 4 and we need to install Bootstrap 3 because the older version of this block system uses Bootstrap 3. And the other problem is that uh, we don't have bundling and minifying installed so since this video already became quite huge I'm going to leave the code like this for now and I'm going to introduce bundling minification and I'm going to add the proper version of the Quant site libraries. The same should be done here with environment names staging production. And I should say that I need to have a script source tag JS site JS for example. And I would need to say that I need a version here too. I would need to install jQuery and Bootstrap too. For now, I'm going to leave that like this, but I need to fix it. I need to fix also the sidebar, the sidebar here, and I need to fix the bundling, the minification, and the admin area too. Okay, before I finish with this video, I would like to 
show you where you can find all the source code I'm writing in my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube profile, which is Ivaio Kenov, hit repositories, write down TV here, and this is the repository in which I am creating uh, and I'm publishing all the demo code I'm using here on my videos. You can find every single lesson with a link to the video and link to the source code. It's available in this source uh, folder. So you can download it, play with it, open a pull request, apparently, whatever you like. I would appreciate if you give me a star and also you can watch the repository if you want to receive notifications when I upload a new video. I'm going to use the moment to thank my sponsors, that's Endeavor, my diamond sponsor, which is constantly searching for passionate developers. So if you're currently searching for a new job or if you're just um, trying to do something new, want a new project, make sure you check their website out. Additionally, I would like to thank my gold sponsors, 2K, Softune, Smart AT, Noble Hire, and OneBit Software. Thank you guys, you truly rock. I appreciate your support. And if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be that motivated to continue creating educational content for free. Thank you guys. And that's pretty much it for this video. We will continue with the next one. And if you are using ksp.net core, make sure you check my tools which are open source tools for fluent assertions of controllers, services, models and everything essentially you use in a single ASP.NET Core app. It's These are projects that are created especially for developers who want to save a lot of time during their testing phase. So take a look at it, you may like it. Okay guys, thank you for watching, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you are new around here. Thank you and bye.